Today is the 66th anniversary of the desegregation of Central High when the Little Rock Nine walked through the doors for the first time. THV 11 Ashley Godwin joins us now as some of the nine were back in town to commemorate the day. Ashley, it's a packed day for them. Right, Roly Faith, this morning, five of the eight surviving members sat in front of Central High School students to answer their questions. Then this afternoon, they held a panel to discuss life then and now. They said this anniversary has brought more questions about the work that still needs to be done, including the state legislature's decision to pass a law that prohibits the teaching of AP African American studies in class. The group had some thoughts on this. That they are being held back to learn about history. They're going to get sick of being told they don't deserve to know. They're going to get tired of saying they're too young to know. It seems to be there's a movement afoot around the country to restrict not only AP courses in African American studies, but almost any other thing that you can might think of. Also at today's panel, the Clinton School of Public Service also announced they are launching an endowment for the Little Rock Nine scholarship to continue. And tonight, the Nine will be at a concert that honors the day. It will be a jazz ensemble of musicians, dancers, and spoken work. Tonight at 10, I'll have that recap, plus more on the Nine's thoughts of the current state of affairs in Arkansas. Ashley, thank you. The Little Rock Nine, of course, made history, but what you might not know is the year that followed is arguably just as important. The lost year is what it came to be known as, and when more than 3,000 high schoolers receive no instruction, THV 11's Journey Taylor shares the story of one unsung hero who spent that year working to get school doors open again. I am the granddaughter of Adolphine Fletcher Terry. A woman of privilege born to a prominent Little Rock family, Adolphine Fletcher Terry was the daughter of a Confederate soldier. However, her forward thinking and time in New York attending the liberal Vassar College broadened her perspective and shaped her into a supporter of progressive issues, according to her granddaughter, Susan Adolphine Terry Bournay. Many of the things she did I did not learn about until later in life. At a young age, Susan knew Adolphine as an encouraging and loving grandparent. Others knew her for leading a vocal women's group, the first to speak publicly against then-Governor Orville Favis. The story is she put on her white gloves and her hat, and she went to see Harry Ashmore, who was one of the editor editors at the Arkansas Gazette. Fueled by the 1957 crisis at Central High, Adolphine formed the Women's Emergency Committee with Vivian Brewer and Velma Powell after voters passed a ballot measure to close all four public high schools in Little Rock for the 1958-59 academic school year. This is a, a, a full-page ad that ran in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. That's when she said, well, the men have failed. It's time to call out the women. This home at 411 East 7th Street would become a space where the need for change led to conversations. These walls gave many women in the committee the security to meet discreetly. Women at the time had only had the vote for a little over three decades. A handful of them had served in the Arkansas legislature. Not many of them held public office during this period. Danielle F. Sorda is the community outreach archivist for the Central Arkansas Library System. She says this group of women, which grew from just three to 1,300, used their ability to organize. Took that skill and applied it to creating the Women's Emergency Committee because they were great organizers and they were great at building community consensus because they were used to having no power. Um, so they leveraged their skills in community organizing to make sure that these students would be able to return to the classroom. For a year, they rallied their communities on the importance of having the city's high schools open. The Women's Emergency Committee, or WEC, successfully passed a resolution to get the Little Rock School Board to vote on renewing the contracts of administrators and teachers. However, the board did not renew contracts to staff members who supported black and white students learning together. Their next job? Removing those segregationist board members with the help of voters and other community groups. And they did. Getting three board members were called. They care deeply about public education being accessible to students here. And without the committee, who knows how long those schools would have remained closed. After the schools reopened in August of 1959, the WEC continued their work of highlighting political, social, and educational issues. 
Adolphine, already in her 70s, did not slow down her efforts of being a trailblazer. But it seems to me that education and schools and libraries, those were the, and integration, those were the things that she was most interested in. She worked to integrate the the YWCA here in town. She worked to integrate the, the public library system. She served on that board for 40 years. And for her efforts, the Central Arkansas Library System named a building in her honor. Susan says if Adolphine could see our society and politics today, she would agree that we're still fighting many of the same battles we have for generations. Access to libraries and books and access for all types of people in our community to be accepted. You know, those are the things I think that she would still be fighting some of the shenanigans that are going on these days. Her family's hope is that her efforts will always shine light on what's important to them, this community, and its future. She really taught us by example. That's just the way you live and you're not going to hide things behind the curtain. In Little Rock, Journey Taylor, THV 11 News.